Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to have a little chat about the Primaris stuff. Again, and this is mostly because we talked about the Primaris Dark Angel stuff that's going to be showed off in White Dwarf. And quite a lot of the comments on that video were talking about the fact that things are beginning to feel a bit samey due to the Primaris Marines. The... One of the issues, I think, with that range as a whole is that it's quite easy for the different chapters to lose their personality somewhat. I mean, when you have a bunch of units whereby you only take one weapon and there is no variation in terms of what they can take, really, from chapter to chapter, you sort of lose the driving forces behind each chapter. For instance, a White Scars army that consists entirely of Primaris Marines does not feel to me like a White Scars army, because there are things like bikes that the White Scars rely on kind of heavily in the lore. You know, they're pretty... I think it's reasonable to say they do like a bike here and there. And so, if there's an army that is purely Primaris, how does that accurately reflect the way White Scars fight? I mean, even if you, even if you say, okay, well, they, they do have some dudes who are walking around, not everyone is on a bike, you are correct. But there is a distinct feel to the White Scars. There is a, I would say, a typical look to a White Scars army, and a bunch of dudes on foot is not exactly that look. Now, even with the introduction of something like the Impulsor, it's still not quite the same visually, and it doesn't quite reflect the same the same chapter traits as an army of the old school bikes. And of course, with there being no Primaris bikes. White Scars are one of those chapters where it would be quite easy for them to feel very similar to basically every other chapter under the influence of the Primaris releases. Same goes for Blood Angels. Blood Angels have, let's face it, quite a thing for close combat. The fact that there are essentially no real Primaris dedicated close combat units kind of make... Blood Angels feel a bit weird, at least to me, anyway. It's one of those things, again, where I kind of have an expectation in my head how accurate that is, is depends entirely on the other person building the army. But for me, Blood Angels, they feel a lot more up close and personal than, say, Ultramarines do. You know, an army full of primary stuff for Ultramarines doesn't feel as weird as a Blood Angels army that consists entirely of Ultramarines. And the same thing for Space Wolves. I mean, Space Wolves are even more out there than, say, Blood Angels, and I would argue Dark Angels, if we're talking about kind of additional Codex chapters. They at least have it's similar things going on to other chapters. They might have a bit more specialised war gear, they might have their own organisational things, they might... They might have their own secret tech going on in some areas, but Space Wolves are so far beyond that in terms of the weird stuff that they use, like actual wolves, for instance, Wolfen as well. If if you see an army that is just Primaris Space Wolves, again, to me, it looks a little bit weird. Now, I'm not trying to bash that. I'm not saying that you're wrong for doing that if that's something you have. By all means, it's your army, it's your money, it's your time, it's your hobby. Do whatever the hell you like. But there is definitely, I think, a a kind of homogenization of a lot of the Space Marine chapters, whereby under the influence of the Primaris stuff, you kind of lose some of that individual personality. And the Dark Angels video was actually, a, I think, a good jumping-off point for talking about how that doesn't actually really necessarily need to be the case, I don't think. I don't think you need to avoid primary stuff, like the plague, if you're going to have the or like authentic Dark Angels experience. I don't think that having a bunch of primary stuff in your force automatically robs that force of any personality. I don't think that's the case. But the thing that gets me with a lot of it, and especially with like Dark Angels a great example of this, a chapter that is so caught up in secrecy and has so many different organisational changes to your standard Space Marine chapters, say standard, other Space Marine chapters for the most part, with things like, I mean, just the whole way that chapter is organised, the way you've got the, the Ravenwing and the Deathwing, you've got the Inner Circle, you've got all these different weird interlinking groups within one larger group, the fact that, you know, essentially all the successor chapters are basically just doing what the Dark Angels have always done, the fact that they can 
come together to hunt down the Fallen, even though that's not really what you should be doing. The Dark Angels are a prime example of a chapter that it feels like should have resisted the Primaris stuff, and didn't. I mean, admittedly, if they had, it would have led to some sort of civil war, which, while interesting, was not the angle that Games Workshop was going for, clearly. But it's kind of easy with the upcoming Primaris Dark Angel stuff to go to kind of just say, well, all right, we're just going to see another Primaris star collecting box for Dark Angels, for instance, is an idea that I've seen floated around. To be honest, I could easily see that being a thing that happens, but it would be a case of how is it different to the Space Wolves? What? How does that work? Would would it be any different? Is there anything else you can put in that box that makes sense? I don't know. Is the issue because for me, the Dark Angels, whilst you do have Greenwing, Deathwing and Ravenwing are so completely at odds with everything that Primaris is. I don't know how you reliably fold Primaris stuff into that. I don't know how you make it part of that chapter's history, part of that chapter's organisation, part of that chapter's lore, that Primaris are part of those things. I mean, again, it's a similar thing with White Scars. You think Ravenwing, you funnily enough think bikes. That is the the central premise of every Ravenwing army, for good reason. Deathwing, similarly, it's Terminators. That is what they are. That is what they are supposed to be. That is what they've been for so, so, so long. How do you suddenly fold Primaris into that when we have aggressors, but we don't have Primaris Terminators? We don't have Primaris bikes. How do you maintain those very, very distinct entities within the Dark Angels force whilst also trying to expand it out with Primaris stuff, without just making it so that it's all Greenwing. That's all it is. That's all you get. Ravenwing, die off. Deathwing, die off. We don't have the stuff that they use in this particular lineup, therefore they're not relevant anymore. You can't do that because they are a massive part of what makes Dark Angels Dark Angels. At the same time, though, there is a whole shed load of primary stuff that simply does not apply to them, that is being pushed as being the new thing. It is most definitely the new thing. It is the slow replacement thing. It is the it is the new standard for Space Marines as a whole. Except for, I would argue, a significant number of chapters, it just doesn't fit. Black Templars are another absolutely prime example of a chapter that Primaris just don't suit. The Black Templars, again, have a different organisational structure. They have a very, very, like, uh, medieval crusades style approach to warfare in terms of the iconography, in terms of, well, they love a bit of close combat, the Black Templars, they're absolutely all for it. That is one of the things that makes that chapter so interesting and so different. The way it's organised, the way they go on crusades, the way that they actually operate compared to everyone else. And it's once again, something that Primaris stuff is just not geared for at all. Like, I'm sure Black Templars do do scouting. I doubt they just throw everything face first, because, you know, no matter how zealous and well-equipped you are, that's a good way to lose a lot of good like guys very, very quickly. But at the same time... Black Templar, like, infiltrators doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? A Black Templar in Victor tactical warsuit doesn't really roll off the tongue. Even even Black Templar Reavers does not really fit the way that that force works. But the problem is neither do normal primary stuff. I don't think Black Templars and think a line of guys just dressed in modern power armor firing guns from a distance. That's not my mental image of Black Templars at all. It doesn't fit the overall feel of the chapter. But the thing that gets me is that, for having said all of that, it doesn't actually need to be the case. It doesn't actually need to be that way, because so much of this could be fixed with primary stuff that was actually made to fit these chapters that do have these more interesting, these differing personalities. Why do we not have Primaris with close combat weapons 
just like dedicated close combat units. Why don't we have an even more up armored form of aggressors that are essentially Primaris Terminators? Why don't we have Primaris bikes yet? I mean, these are things that have been staples of the Space Marine range for forever. These are things that have made the Space Marines what they are. Now, yeah, Primaris stuff is a more modern take. It is a more technological take. It is a it is an update of the Space Marine, not just in looks, not just in lore, but in how they fight. That being said, there is still space for everything else. There is still space for there to be Primaris units that actually serve these chapters, that have their own way of waging war, that have their own units dedicated to waging war in the way that they choose to wage war. You know, I mean, specifically thinking about Blood Angels and White Scars and Dark Angels and and Black Templars and Space Wolves and these are chapters that could easily be served with units that just don't exist for some reason. That in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that they don't yet exist. I mean, you could say, well, why would they replace Terminators or Bikes? Well, they've already replaced standard space marines that's what intercessor squads are they've already replaced devastator squads that's what hell blasters are they they are slowly replacing all the standard space marine stuff with primary stuff you've noticed it by now everyone has and i know that plenty of you are not happy about it and to be honest whilst i think it's inevitable i'm also not keen i might not be too fussed about the old space marine range anymore largely because god knows i've put enough of it together uh by this point that you know <laughs> a change is nice but it's already heading that way. And the way that we currently have things, you have you have chapters that are now, I would argue, even better served than they were before. You want to make a Raven Guard army now? Holy, I mean, my God, good grief. You are so over-served for stealthy units at this point for Raven Guard. You can't move for stealthy units. You can have an entire army that is nothing but stealthy units and then some. You couldn't ask for more when it comes to when it comes to that. Same thing with Imperial Fist. You want to form some sort of gun line now for Space Marines? Well, congratulations. That's literally what Primaris are built around. So many chapters are perfectly served. So many that are now in a position whereby, if anything, they have just as much choice just from a different avenue as they did before. And yet, there are so many that just are not being served by this new stuff that are at risk of being kind of made to feel very samey, at risk of losing their personality. And it puts me in a really weird position. Because on the one hand, Primaris bikers would make White Scars and Ravenwing so much more what they should be with this new massive range of Space Marine stuff. Primaris Terminators would absolutely make, again... Things like the Deathwing, there would be no issue with that anymore. It would just be a thing that still carries on. It would make sense that that particular arm of the Death of the Dark Angels continued as it should. At the same time, we've got a lot of Primaris stuff. We have a huge amount of Primaris stuff. And we have so many kits in the Xenos side of Warhammer 40k that are still fine cast or at least that are still resin, that haven't had an update for years. We have all the Aspect Warriors for Eldar. We still have some shockingly bad Orc models up for sale. We have weird dead-end armies that just don't really seem to be going anywhere and haven't felt like they're going anywhere for quite some time. We've got so much that needs updating that is not Primaris, and yet it feels like a lot of chapters are in this weird half-state where Primaris only serve part of what they do, and the rest of what they do is totally ignored. Which, on the one hand, you could say, well, that's because the old Space Marine range still exists. You're asking for stuff to exist that already does. Yes and no. I'm asking why doesn't it exist, because it feels like everything is being steadily replaced, so why not these key things? 
why why haven't these particular area like areas been focused on in order to allow different chapters to retain the personality that they have had for so long everything is clearly shifting that way anyway did we need more stealthy units did we need a bunch of the stuff we've just had does that mean that certain chapters now feel even more like they should have done from the start with the primary stuff because it feels like there's quite a few that just don't feel like them when you're using Primaris. Which is weird, because it feels like everything's shifting away from standard anyway. So, are we going to see them? When are we going to see them? How long is it going to take? We're going to have to wait for the next Space Marine Codex to have bikers? And if we did have a big sudden push, where's that leave the rest of the range? Where does all the... Xenos stuff go? Like, where are the updates for that? It's it's weird because it feels like there are chapters that are left almost in limbo because it feels like everything is gearing towards replacing standard Space Marines except for certain aspects of that range, which feel completely neglected, if that makes sense. It's weird. It's It just feels odd. And the only reason that I've really thought about it that much in the last couple of days is because I've talking about the primary Dark Angel stuff in uh, next month's White Dwarf and what it could possibly contain and the fact it probably won't contain very much at all. Anyway, that was very rambly, as always. Let me know what you think of all of that lot in the comments down below, if it was coherent enough to comment on. I hope it was. Um, as always, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And uh, as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games. If you are in Europe and you click it and you buy something, I get a little something for sending you that way. You send between save between 15 and 25% on all the 40k stuff, every other tabletop game ever made as well by the look of it, and paint and all that kind of stuff. So you can use that if you like. It's a way to support the channel with essentially no extra steps and no extra cost. So it's a thing you can do if you would like to, but it's entirely up to you as always. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.